Hey Coconut, so I'm sure by now you have heard somewhere, somehow, someone must have told you that you should invest in yourself. It's the most secure investments ever. Bounce I want guarantee have returns because you're investing in yourself. And I tell you, it's very hard to take the other side of the discussion, but I am going to attempt to take the other side of the discussion today to share with you why I believe that you should not invest in yourself, or at least you shouldn't see yourself as an investment, right? So I'm going to share with you my thoughts, my perspectives. It's going to be a chill session today, you know, after so many weeks of extremely geeky discussions. Today, we're going to take a slightly meme angle to play around with this. Uh, It's not all semantics discussion, but yeah, I have my thoughts thoughts and I hope this provides you a mindset shift to look at investments and how to love yourself. Welcome back. So good morning everyone. I welcome you to another day with the Financial Coconut. In our podcast, we're debunking financial myths, discovering best financial practices and discussing financial strategies that fits our unique life. You get it. Ultimately empowering us to create a life we love while managing our finances well. And today I'm going to spend some time to share with you why you shouldn't invest in yourself. Okay? You are not an investment. Okay, so before you think like this is some clickbaity shit and I'm purposely taking the other side of the discussion so that you will click in and listen, the reality is probably, yes, a little bit of it, (laughs) but I also want to make a point here. And the basis for today's discussion is that I am extremely big on how we name things and how we use vocabulary, how we use certain terms, right? I find it extremely problematic when we see ourselves as an investment. And so why is nomenclature important? Essentially names like vocabs, why is it important? I'm not going to go into like some long history discussion about words and what do they mean, but I want to challenge you to do a short little social experiment. Since everybody is locked down at home, um, <laughs> try this, okay? Text 10 friends and ask them a few things, right? Ask them, uh, you can ask them things like, uh, what is love to you? Or what is respect? Um, define responsibility. What is freedom? And I guarantee you, 10 answers will have limited overlap. Everybody has a different answer. You know why? Because I tried it in many, many live discussions. So I asked 10 people, like, what is love? What is love? What is love? What is love? And then all different. <laughs> Generally, it's pretty different. And that's the power of vocabulary because everyone is attaching a certain meaning to it. And with that, you realize people use vocabulary extremely loosely, which is why when I talk about things like risk, which is something that is very used you know, in day-to-day, everything is very risky, everything is risk, 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 right? The episodes that we talk about risk, I made it a point to define what is risk. And that forms the basis of discussion. Because when you define something, there is a premise where everybody can then, ah, okay, so this is what it is. And then we can discuss from there. If not, you realize that it is an endless discussion because everybody's definition of that fundamental thing that they're discussing is different. So big words like freedom, liberty, responsibility, love, all of them are extremely fluffy in different, different people's eyes. People see it differently. And when it comes to investment, right, this is that one word that is also extremely loosely used. Everything is an investment. Buy a bag is an investment, right? Go for a course is an investment. Uh, Investing in a financial product is an investment. Buy stocks, everything is investment. (sighs) These days, even an auntie talks about investment. So if you think about it, right, it's also another word that's extremely loosely used. And every time something is very loosely used, I find it extremely problematic. So to kickstart this discussion, I'm going to define what is an investment. And to me, an investment is allocating capital, in this case money, allocating capital into something in the hopes of it making more capital for me in the future. And that's it. So there are two main ideas in this definition. Number one is I am allocating capital. I'm putting money away into something so that it can make me more money in the future. So this kind of governs the whole idea of delayed gratification, right? Essentially means I'm putting money away, not consuming them now, but hoping that by buying something else in the future, my money will grow so that I can get more money to consume. The end is still to consume, okay? I think that is something that a lot of people need to be very clear about. 
the baseline is still consumption. Stocks, bonds, REITs, businesses, it's not a consumption thing. You're not going to consume those things, not even money. right? You can consume experiences, you can consume a great dinner, you can buy something that you can, you know, like a bag or something, right? All those things are your end consumption. But if you're not going to buy all those things for consumption and you're going to allocate capital into something for future capital, that is investments. Okay, so that is one concept in this definition. And the other concept is the concept of hope. Right? So like I said, I'm defining it. Investments is me allocating capital into something in the hopes that it will give me more capital into the future. So the idea of hope is extremely important because it will then factor in things like risk, uncertainty, and my realistic understanding that this is not guaranteed. Okay, there are fluctuations, there are things that will happen, and I'm just making my best educated guess. Okay? So you can define things in however you want to define. You don't need to share my definition of investments. But if you can define investments or risk or love or responsibility in however that you want to define in your own words, it gives you that colour in your life. And research have shown that people with a wider set of vocabulary experiences life in a more colourful tone. Imagine you only know the word sad. Sad, 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 sad. Everything is sad. What piang? You know, <laughs> there is no texture, there's no nuances, there's no, you know, variance in your experience. Everything is all happy law, sad law, angry law, right? And, and that's going to like limit your way of life and it's going to limit the way you see things. So definitely learn to define things in a more specific manner and be clear about it. So for the word of investment, don't use it loosely. Buying a bag is consumption. Don't tell me you're investing. So this is not like some semantics play. I'm not trying to like make your life difficult. Everything must define, okay? But if you can have clearer definition about different things in life, especially these big words, right? Freedom, liberty, democracy, you know, investments, risk, insurance, you know, all these kind of things uh, that... People use it extremely loosely and they don't have clear ideas about what they're saying. It makes their life extremely like feely-feely, right? So in a sense, it's not a problem to live life in a feely-feely fashion, but you will find it very hard to repeat yourself consistently, okay? So, so all these discussions we can carry on another time, but the base idea that I have defined investment as then informs why I think you should not invest in yourself, and the first point, <laughs> a bit funny, okay? Point number one is most people that tell you to invest in yourself actually really wants you to invest in them. It's not about yourself. So where do you hear this line a lot, right? Invest in yourself. You hear this a lot in the course circuit or in the people that are trying to sell programs or motivational discussion or all these, these kind of stuff, like essentially, okay? So it's not a problem. I... Totally think you should read books, you should go for programs, you should improve yourself. It's part and parcel of life. And if the course providers are doing a good job, hey, then why not, right? You should pay for them so that they can continue to create good courses and benefit you. So essentially, if you think about it, right, you can go to the library, everything can be free, okay? That's the truth. You can go to the library, read a thousand books, everything can be free. Or compared to someone already read the book and they filtered the information and then they come to you in a structured manner and ta-da, that's a course. You pay them for their whole process of development, right? So courses are not bad in itself. I used to think courses are extremely disgusting, but I've come to realize that courses make my life easy because I don't need to do all the research, okay? But that does not mean that you should go for all the courses and, and everything. My problem with this idea of investing in yourself, being propagated within the course ecosystem or within this whole motivational discussion ecosystem is that a lot of time, they're just trying to prime you to spend money. They're just trying to prime you to take out money to put with them, essentially, to buy their program so that you can invest in their course. It's not so much about you. So I've talked about this before in some of the earlier podcasts. If you want to learn something, go and read a book. That's the cheapest, okay? You can go to the library, get a free. If not, you can go and buy something online. And a lot of reviews these days, right? So then read a book, read one or two books about that particular topic and question yourself, hey, is this something that I'm willing to invest further? If this is something that I'm willing to invest further, then okay, maybe you could go and sign up a program from there. And don't buy those few thousand dollar program like Super Mentor or those kind of shit. If you think about it, if you want to be a karate black belt, you start with a white belt. 
if you are nobody and you go and talk to the highest level individual, right, you will get no ball. You don't get it, right? Because there are so many things that you need to pick up, which is why the podcast is great because you learn a little bit, a little bit, a little bit over time. And then at some point in time, you'll be like, okay, now I know what to do. And then you can interact on a higher order and then you benefit from talking to all these like maestro and guys. So I'm not saying these people are lousy or these people are frauds, um, although many are in my view. In my view, okay? So in that sense, you can actually learn for a fraction of the cost, right? Or maybe like a, a tenth of the cost. And you can start there, you can tinker, you can play around. And if you think like, yeah, maybe this is my thing. Maybe designing is my thing. Maybe copywriting is my thing. Or maybe investing is my thing. Maybe coding is my thing. After you try a little bit, a little bit, this is a tinkering process. Then you can decide, that, okay, I want to put more resources into this thing, right? I want to double down on it. And potentially it can become my career. It can become my side hustle. It can become my thing. And that is beautiful and amazing. But do not let this line of invest in yourself then tie you into this whole course circuit to say that, oh, yeah, 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 you know, invest in yourself is the most secure, blah, blah, blah. Actually, no. If you think about your marginal increase in your income, okay? If let's say every year you are growing your income at 5% after you go for this program, okay? Or 10% after you go for this program, you think it's pretty good, right? And you think like, well, yeah, I invested in myself. Yeah, I'm growing and, and it's cool that my income is growing. But actually, you could take the same set of money and then put into another stock, like a Facebook or like a Tencent, like a WeChat, whatever, okay? Not recommending here. And they are growing at 25% top line year on year. You are only growing at 5%, 10%. Right? So if you think about it, and also uh, a lot of core success rates are very low, okay? So... That's my first point, like essentially. A lot of people, when they hear this line of investing in yourself, they have this mesmerization that, yeah, 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 it's the most secure, it's the best, I should just invest myself. But actually, it is just their way of getting you to take out money to invest in them so that you buy their course. Which brings me to point number two, and that is to love yourself. Grow, explore, live your life, you are not an investment. Okay, period. I have a lot to say about this. But we'll come back after a word from our sponsor. Okay, so this is a more interesting point in the sense that I find it extremely problematic when people see themselves as an investment or see their kids as an investment. That's also extremely problematic. Okay, in my view, when you see yourself as an investment or you see your kids as an investment or you see your friends, your relationships as an investment. My definition of investing is putting capital into something, hoping that this thing will give you more capital into the future. And that is extremely problematic when you see relationships in this manner, when you see your relationship with yourself in this manner. Why do we need to be endlessly more productive? Why do we need to keep creating more and keep improving? Why cannot we just live our lives and explore different things, spend great time with the fam and do your thing? But okay, that is not to say that if you invest your, in yourself or you see yourself as an investment, you're not going to be more productive. You're not going to be making more money. Yes, probably you will if you have a particular skill set that's extremely welcome by the labor market, right? They really need it and they will price you up. You can command a higher price. And if you really become very skilled at something, yes, you will be more productive. You will be able to do more output compared to other people. So I'm not discounting the fact that by investing in yourself, you are going to become more valuable, quote-unquote. But why I believe that you shouldn't see yourself as an investment, because you are not a machine. You are a person and you want to live a great life, right? That's our motto, right? Living the life you love while managing your finances well. So if you want to live a great life, you got to live like a human. You have to realize that, hey, this is who I am. I love myself, but I want to grow. Right? So I love where I am, I accept who I am at this moment in time, but I want to grow, I want to improve, I want to try new things, I want to go out there and try. And that's great. And if you see yourself as an investment, when is it ever enough? Right? If you think about it, when is it ever enough? And if it's never enough, then you are essentially going on this endless circuit of acquiring more and more and more and more, which many people are on this endless circuit of acquiring more and more and thinking that by having more, it's going to solve your problems. Is it really the case? Of course, it's case by case. But I'm trying to bring you a different way to look at it. So don't treat yourself as an investment. Think about what is enough for you. Where are you now? What do you enjoy? And where do you want to go? 
And if you want to go there, okay, then let's see what we can do, right? We can learn new skills, we can grow, we can explore, we can play around. Why not, right? Why must everything be stuck on this idea of investing? And you realize that I use different vocabulary. I use words like explore. I use words like learn. I use words like embrace, grow. And these will give you a lot more, you know, definition and clarity in how you treat yourselves and how you use certain words to treat different aspects of your life and how you embrace with different things. So this is really a mindset shift, okay? I don't want people to think themselves as an investment because I think this drives the whole hustle culture. This drives the whole endless growth and productivity. And it's very draining, very tiring. And people get nowhere. You don't find the life you love on this endless ride for more. So define what is enough for you. What is the life you can love? And then work from there, right? You can always chase the life you love. I'm not asking you not to do it. But you see what I'm seeing. You shouldn't see yourself as an investment learn to love yourself and experience life, okay? That's pretty much what I really want to tell you. And I know it's a little bit uh, different from our usual content today, but I really like to talk about these kind of things. And let me know if you like me to share with you these kind of life perspectives, uh, because this will probably help you see life in a different way. And that's kind of where I come from, right? I, I didn't come from a traditional financial background. I really came from this like radical, crazy person that went around and tried all these different things. A lot of things that I'm sharing with you, I really picked up along the way. And yeah, this is one thing that irks me a lot. So I hope you see it differently. I hope it benefits you. Which brings me to point number three of why you shouldn't invest in yourself. And that is actually investing in others is much easier, gives you more returns with lesser sweat. <sighs> okay, so like I've said in the front, actually, you think that you are making 5%, 10%, 20% more income. But actually, a lot of these big companies, right, they are growing their top line. If you think of top line revenue growth as like income growth, they are growing at 25%, 30%. Some of the biggest companies, right, Facebook, Tencent, Alibaba, not picking stocks here, not recommending. But if you think about it, investing in businesses is really much easier than investing in yourself. Because when you invest in yourself, you are essentially the business, right? So if you are the business, you're not just putting capital, you're putting your time, you're putting your resources, you're putting your life, you're putting your network, everything in it. It's extremely tiring. You don't know what's going to happen. And honestly, the hit rate is very, very low. Right? So risk-reward tells us that maybe this is not the best way. But I'm not saying that you shouldn't be an entrepreneur. I, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm super big on entrepreneurship. I think everybody, if you have an idea or you want to try, hey, do it. But recognize that you're trying. Recognize that you're experimenting. Recognize that you are you know, dipping your toes in the waters and not hug onto this idea that I must make it. I must do it. I'm investing in myself and I need to have capital. I need to make sure this is profitable, right? So when you do that, it's extremely unhealthy. And then actually there's a better way, which is just to invest in others, right? Invest in other businesses, buy index funds, which essentially is an amalgamation of all the businesses in the market. Yeah, you get an idea. So invest in others, invest in businesses, it makes your life much easier. And to me, that is really how investing should work. I put my money into something and then I hope that it makes me more money. I don't want to be too active in this process. That's not mean I'm like passive and all, okay? I have to pick companies or I have to decide which fund to buy and all that stuff. So in that sense, I put my money somewhere else. It works for me. Why do I need to put that pressure of making more money onto myself? Wow, it's pretty nuts, right? And every time you think of like, oh, investing in myself indirectly, you're putting that pressure for profit on yourself. Like it or not, okay? You can go and touch your heart and ask yourself. Every time people use investments, it's not for fun. Man. Some people say, I'm investing for fun. It's like, don't lie. When someone say investing for fun, they're just giving themselves uh, some sort of back door so that they can leave the stage if shit happens, if their investment fails. They're trying, okay? And it's okay to try, but don't kid yourself. So, Nobody invests for fun. Everybody, when they use the word investments, they want some sort of returns and they want some sort of growth, like it or not. So in my view, hey, don't treat yourself like an investment and invest in other people, invest in other companies. They can perform so much better with limited sweat for you. 
So yes, thank you for listening to 20 minutes of my rant. I know today it's a little bit different and I felt a need to talk about it essentially because recently I've been seeing a lot of course programs coming up because everybody's locked down, right? A lot of these advertisers will start to come up and they're trying to sell us programs. And like I said, I'm not against courses, I'm not against programs, but I find it extremely problematic when people give themselves a lot of stress in this idea of investing in yourself. Okay, so... I hope you learned something useful. I'm going to sum up today three pointers as to why you shouldn't invest in yourself. And number one is because most people, when they tell you to invest in yourself, they're really trying to make money off you. They're trying to get you to invest in them, right? Buy their programs, buy their books, buy into their ideology and whatnot. Number two is that love yourself, grow, explore, embrace your life. You are not an investment, okay? Investments are supposed to allocate capital into something so that I hope that in the future, it can make more capital for me. But you are you. You are an individual. You're not a robot. You're not a cow. You're not a whatever. Okay, not 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 animal. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm not being some anti-environmentalist or something. Okay, but the idea is, you are not an investment. You're an individual. Love yourself. Invest elsewhere. Okay, put your money elsewhere. Set your expectations right with the right vocabulary. Okay. And number three is, if essentially, investing in others probably gives you a better return with lesser sweat. Not so crazy, not so tautia. And with that, I hope you learned something useful today. See ya! Hey, I hope you learned something useful today and truly appreciate that you took time off to better your life with the Financial Coconut. Knowledge is that much more powerful and interesting when shared, debated and discussed. Join our community telegram group, follow us on our socials, sign up for our weekly newsletter, everything is in the description below. And if you love us, want to help us grow, definitely share the podcast with your friends and on your socials. Also sign up for our members back end for more investment related content, live discussions, curated content and most importantly, your commitment to us is a step further for us to continue creating great content focused on you rather than advertisers. So yes, for more information, check out thefinancialcoconut.com With that, have a great day ahead, stay tuned next week and always remember, personal finance can be chill, clear and sustainable for all. Woohoo! So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's content. It's a little bit different, not so technical, very mindset-y. Um, covered a few concepts and how I see life, how I see investments. Um, I think this would be very beneficial for a lot of people because I do see a lot of people um, always trying to optimize. Everything must optimize, right? Everything trying to make more, make the most. Um, but you know, you're not lo- you're not fully logical. Like. You have some logical brains, <laughs> but we're humans. We have emotional aspects, and we shouldn't see ourselves as an investment. Uh, we should live our life, right? So I hope you I hope you um, get a little bit of interesting perspectives today. And later this week, I'm going to be spending time with uh, the Provident guys again. Uh, CK and Brian, they're going to come on to talk a little bit about term insurance, right? Which is their pet topic. And they're going to talk about how term um, is more powerful in their view, right? So how you can use term and investments uh, to form this compound arrangement rather than just directly buying a compound product, uh, which is whole life or ILP. So we're going to talk about all those things. And yeah, I think it's, it's definitely beneficial for everybody. I hope you will continue to stay tuned and learn good stuff. Next week, I'm going to spend some time with you to talk about FIRE. Okay, recently I think there's also some uh, content out there about FIRE and I do have some ideas about FIRE uh, and I'm not totally against FIRE. I think sometimes it's very extreme, right? Financial independence retire early. Some people go to the extremes to achieve this thing, right? So um, while I'm not extreme, like a FIRE, FIRE kind of person, I do think there are some basics and some ideas that are great to share and great to expand upon, right? So we're going to do that next week. I'm going to share with you some core beliefs, okay? To help you fire better or, you know, um, just make the journey of financial progress a more fun and palatable one, lah, in my view, okay? So, yep, see ya next week. Take care.